Story 1. The sirens were going off, and I was kind of excited that I was in an ambulance. To keep me calm, the paramedic was telling me about the different lights they have. I asked if she had a pink one because that's my favorite color. Soon after that, I passed out. When I woke up, the surgeon who was going to operate on me came over to talk to my mom and explain what was going to happen. Then they put a mask over my face. The last thing I saw was a sign on a double door that said, Theater 2. After that, things didn't happen right away. I remember being in complete darkness. It's like closing your eyes, but there's no light or sound. It was just endless nothingness. Then I remember going through a tunnel that changed colors from black to gray. I felt so peaceful like I've never felt before. I felt like I was floating. When I came out of the tunnel, I was floating over a pearly gray cloudy place. It's hard to describe, but it looked like clouds. Slowly, I floated down to solid ground, but it didn't really look solid. Out of nowhere, a person appeared from behind a curtain. I couldn't see their face clearly, but they were tall and wearing a robe. Looking back, I didn't know this person, but at that moment, it felt like I had known them my whole life. I ran over and hugged their legs, and they hugged me back. Their voice sounded like they were talking underwater. I remember them showing me a smoky curtain. Behind it, there were so many people rushing around really fast, like blurry figures. All of a sudden, I found myself in a place where people were waiting in line. I locked eyes with a lady dressed in fancy old-fashioned clothes. She didn't seem rich, but her outfit was really nice. She had a big hat on top of her hair, a blouse, and a long skirt with boots that had buckles on them. Out of nowhere, I was back where I started, but things were a little different. Right in front of me was a veil, and two people stepped out from behind it. One was a short old lady with curly hair who was wearing a skirt. The other was an old man with glasses and not much hair on top. He was wearing suspenders and needed a chair to sit on. I had no clue who these people were, but I felt really comfortable around them. They asked me, How is your mom? I told them she was fine and we talked for a while. I sat on the ground while all of this was happening. After some time, the guardian I met when I first arrived said, It's time, you have to go. I didn't want to leave, I really liked it there. But the guardian said I had to go, so I reluctantly agreed. Before I left, I stood on the edge of something and looked out at a big gray and white space. I glanced to my right and saw the guardian in person from the beginning standing a few meters away doing the same thing. Then he turned to me and said, Bad things will happen, but don't worry, everything will be okay. I looked at the guardian and felt really confused. And just like that, I was going back the same way I came in. But this time I was flying backwards really fast. I woke up in the hospital, but I don't remember much about it. I was really surprised to see all these tubes and wires stuck in me. So I yanked them out and got really mad at the doctors. My mom was there and she was shocked too because I went from being asleep to being really angry. The only thing I remember is waking up at night with soft lights and seeing the doctors and my parents around my bed. I looked under my nightgown and saw bandages from my surgery. I thought it was pretty cool and went back to sleep. Later, my mom told me that my appendix had burst and I got really sick. The bad stuff in my body was infecting my bowels and bladder and it was getting close to my heart. The doctors had to bring me back to life twice during the surgery. If my heart had stopped again, they wouldn't have been able to save me. I haven't talked about this much because I'm not really religious and I don't want to give false hope. But it's made me think about how sometimes bad things happen. After all this, my parents got divorced and my mom had a baby with someone else. Then my dad suddenly passed away from a really bad problem with his stomach. Around the same time, someone in our family hurt me. It was a really tough time, but things are getting better now. I still wonder about all of it and I probably always will. This story was shared by Rebecca S. and happened in 2003. Story 2. I shouted to my husband, he's not stopping. And then we had a terrible crash. Our car was turning left when the van hit the side where I was sitting. People who saw it happen later said that our car spun around in circles. After we finally stopped, my husband told me that I said, call on Jesus, he'll help us. Then I passed out. The police and ambulance arrived and they had to force open the door on my side because it was badly damaged. I think my husband was holding our child while all of this was going on. They managed to get me out and put me in an ambulance. Later, my husband told me that I kept saying, ouch, ouch, whenever we went over bumps on the road. So the ambulance driver went slower for me. 
I was still unconscious, so I don't remember any of that. When we got to the hospital, I was lying on a bed, probably in the emergency room. My husband called his parents and they came to be with us. My husband, our child, and his parents were in another room or behind a curtain, separated from where I was lying. I think only nurses or maybe a doctor were allowed to come in and out of that area with me. I'm not entirely sure because I was somewhere else in my mind. Jesus came up to me and asked if I wanted to see where I was. I nodded eagerly and said, yes. Then he showed me that he was right in front of me, wearing a white robe and sitting on a tall white chair. I was kneeling at his feet with my legs folded under me like I was sitting on the floor. I had my hands covering my face because I was crying so much. I begged him, please let me live. I want to keep living. When I looked up from my hands, I saw Jesus sitting next to God. God had a big round cloud in front of him so I couldn't see his face, but I could see a little bit of his side and back. He was also sitting on a tall white chair, just like Jesus. Jesus turned to God and asked him, can she live? God made a gesture to Jesus, and suddenly Jesus stood up and shouted in a loud, excited voice. He said, yes, he said, yes. He had both of his hands raised up high, as if he was telling everyone the good news. The next thing I knew, I woke up and realized I was in my body again. A nurse came over to me right away and told me that I had been in a car accident and was in the hospital. They quickly called my husband. In my mind, I thought, I'm not going to tell anyone about what just happened. But the first thing I did was tell my husband that I had been in heaven and saw Jesus. He told me that they had been waiting in the waiting room for a long time and were all tired and hungry. The nurses gave our baby fresh juice or milk, which I was really thankful for. I told the nurse, hey, I'm going to get up from this bed. I felt really uncomfortable and wanted to feel better by standing up. She replied, hmm, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Then they took me for some x-rays and tests and pushed me around in the bed. Turns out I had broken six bones. Four of my ribs were broken and two bones in my pelvis too. My lung was also punctured and my liver was bruised. The doctors said I might be bleeding and bruised inside in other places too. I had to stay in the intensive care unit for a whole week. They even put a tube in my chest to help my lungs, but it hurt so bad. After a week, they moved me to a regular room to recover for three more weeks. I stayed in the hospital for a whole month. When it was time to go home, they didn't want to hurt my pelvis, so they brought me home in an ambulance. I also had a wheelchair because I couldn't sit in a regular chair yet. Luckily, my husband didn't get hurt. He just had a cut on his lip. My sister-in-law took care of our kid while my husband went to work. One day, while I was sitting in the wheelchair in the kitchen, I thought to myself, hey, I'm feeling better and stronger. So I stood up and walked to the refrigerator. But then I sat back down because I didn't want to push myself too hard. I took small steps every day until I was completely healed and able to walk normally. It was awesome to have my kid back at home with me during the day too. After waiting for three years, I finally had another baby, a boy, and two years later, I had a baby girl. When I think back to that scary time, the message I got was, don't be scared, I've got you and I'll keep you safe. God is always right here with us, always. This story was shared by Laura Kay and happened in 1986.